Um, but for those of you who are wondering who the two voices are, <laughs> my name is Gemma Hillier Moses, founder of Move Charity. So I'm going to be delivering the workshop for you. Um, and then we've got the amazing Georgie as well, who's the other. So Georgie, just say hello so that everyone can see you. Hiya, um, hopefully you can all see me as well. I'll do as a quick introduction in a sec. We'll just let everyone join. Just checking no one's emailed me, getting stuck in trying to join, but I think hopefully we are all good. Hopefully you can all hear us. Yeah, I'll just let people in as they go. <laughs> it's fine. Um, Brilliant. Um, while you're doing that, Gemma, we'll start with a quick intro and a little bit of admin background things. Um, so first things first, um, like Gemma just did a quick introduction, um, so I'm Georgie, the 5k away manager, and obviously Gemma was delivering this workshop and she is our brilliant um, Move Charity CEO, 5k away co-founder and um, cancer rehab instructor, but I'll let her do more of an introduction, obviously, when she starts the workshop. Um, so yeah, firstly, thanks so much for joining. I think I think we're full. Uh, 98 people signed up, which is amazing. Um, we have to cap it at that because that's the most you're allowed on Zoom. <laughs> Um, so that's fantastic. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Great mixture of people, um, those living with or beyond cancer and also healthcare professionals I know are joining us too. So thanks for taking the time to join. And if anyone that you know that couldn't um, and obviously wanted to, this is going to be recorded and then we're going to upload to our YouTube channel and our website. So don't worry, they can find it there. Um, and also just so you know, we're just recording a speaker view. So you'll only be able to see um, me or Gemma that's speaking on the recording. So don't worry, you won't see you, but you can have your camera on if you want, or you don't have to, completely up to you. Um, so yeah, also shout out to Rachel and thank you to Rachel, our new operational officer um, for her support and hard work in the background of creating this workshop as well. Um, and yeah, so quickly, for those of you that don't know, 5K Your Way um, initiative um, is a, a community based initiative on the last Saturday of the month. And we're super happy to have just had our groups back. So maybe when some of you joined workshops before, um, we weren't uh, running as groups because of COVID, obviously. And so now we've had three group meetups, which is amazing um, on the last Saturday of every month linked to Park Run. Um, and this is an initiative provided by Move Charity. So if you're interested in finding out any more about that, we'll post uh, when we email you kind of the, the follow up email from this workshop. We'll, we'll send some links in with that as well um, and links to our resources. We've got a Move Against Cancer podcast. We've got a YouTube channel with all of our movement sessions on by cancer rehab instructors um, and lots of other great links as well. So. Just touched on the admin, I think that's everything. Gemma will ask for your involvement, so do type in the text box um, and then we can hopefully have some time for questions at the end. If you're stuck on anything as well, type in the text box and me and Rachel are here to help with that too. Um, and yeah, then we'll just send a quick feedback survey when we do the email at the end as well. Um, so it'll be really, really helpful if you can uh, complete that just so then we can try and improve these workshops or if you've got any suggestions on anything else that you would like to see us do um, and I think that's pretty much everything hopefully we're going to be doing workshops every month so this is the first one back after kind of quite a bit of a break um, so the next one will be in November and so hopefully Gemma how are we getting on with accepting people good yeah so be nice on that feedback form please remember I'm only, <laughs> I'm only human <laughs> um I am just I am multitasking a little bit because thank you Georgie for the great introduction you you pinched most of my introduction and probably oh, some of my end of my presentation about what to do next <laughs> um but it's fantastic so I'm gonna have to keep omitting people that are coming into the waiting room next time remind us to do a no waiting room just let you all in then that's everybody on whenever they come in um, so it's always lovely to see everybody's faces because obviously we're in a very digital world so I can see some people have got some amazing um, pictures of themselves but actually the moving photo moving videos of you guys are the best ones um, because we're actually able to see you um, but I do have a Lego man yeah so give us a wave <laughs> it always feels nicer because obviously the world has opened up a little bit but the great thing about doing these workshops is we wouldn't be able to do them really unless it was, well, the Lego man's come, <laughs> come alive. <laughs> um, hi, John. <laughs> um, so we wouldn't actually be able to do these workshops the same amount of people at these times without them actually being virtual. So well done, Zoom, for sorting us out. Um, so today I just want to, um, we are going to use, so I'm going to share a presentation 
Um, but I just want to, um, oh yeah, I can just see that chat box. I think Georgie's gonna answer any questions in the chat box in terms of to do specifically. Um, but again, we'll get rid of this first part and I've pinned myself so nobody will be recorded or seen on the recordings at all um, because we make sure that's um, completely off. So it would just be the presentation for anybody who wants to watch back. Um, so what I want to, um, the reason with this workshop is really important because cancer related fatigue um, is very uh, is a big side effect of cancer treatment and so you may be on this workshop because you've um, been diagnosed with cancer you've been going through your treatment you might know somebody or have family and friends who's been diagnosed with cancer or you might be a healthcare professional so we do understand so if you're a healthcare professional you might be taking some of this information to take back um, to the hospital to your patients um, to be able to talk to them in a more meaningful way. So we do understand that people are coming from all different backgrounds and all walks of life um, for this workshop. So I just want to make um, you aware that we are, with anything to do with cancer and exercise, there is an individual element to it. So it's really important that although we try and, you know, answer questions that are very individual, my aim today is to give you the tools, the skills and the knowledge to be able to take that back and put um, into small steps and small um, things into your life to so take the small steps so that you can make things better for yourself or the people around you. OK, so it might not solve all of your issues or problems, but hopefully giving you the skills, the tools and knowledge um, to work through and reduce cancer related fatigue whether it's yourself a friend a family member or for any patients that you're working with so give me the thumbs up those who got the cameras on if that's okay <laughs> brilliant okay so what I'm going to do I'm going to just take myself I am just going to share the screen because I just want to um I'll still do a quite a bit of talking um but let me just see if I can share my screen um so you can get that up there and then just pop it on there okay brilliant um so what i want to do i'm going to um reduce that so i can just see um so the aim of this um workshop is to also make sure that we use the chat box so those of you i'm not sure how many people have been on my workshops before but it's really good to get that interaction and there's a couple of things that I do want to know from you guys. So if you don't have access to your chat box, don't worry about it. It'd be hard to have 100 people or 90 people um, doing that in their chat box. But please um, use the chat box to communicate and to share your thoughts and feelings. Um, and then I will definitely use them to, to read out as well. So what I would like to um, start off with is I always like to start the workshops with a positive. So we're going to put our positive pants on and I want you to tell me um, what have you done today or this week to make you feel better? OK, have you been for a walk with a friend? Have you been for a swim? Have you, um, you know, have you just eaten the best cake of your life this week? Um, I want everybody because I think it really helps us to feed off each other. What's been a positive for your week? Um, really good way to start the session. So we're going to see if anyone can pop in the chat box um, and see what see what everybody comes up with there. Brilliant. So Louise has put a surprise weekend away with a group of friends, which has probably been most needed after the last um, year. So recovering from a marathon. Claire, I'm on exactly the same. Um, which one did you do? I can't remember which one you did. London, I think, or virtual. Um, Manchester Marathon, um, London Marathon. So I'm also recovering from a marathon and managed to pick up a cold as well. Um, so we've got loads coming through. So make sure you're reading through these yoga, Pilates class. I also did a Pilates class, Jill, yesterday. Did an online one, which was fantastic. Jason, early morning sunrise run. Yes, brilliant. Love that. Did a 5K on Sunday, which was slow, but completed it. Yeah. remember it doesn't matter how slow it is you do it your way which is what our tagline is um 5k dog went for a 5k dog walk yesterday morning with a friend before work walk with her bestie and my new puppy oh that's lovely Kath um uh, weekend in Cornwall with old friends lots of time in the sea Manchester Marathon Claire we were up there supporting on Sunday so um fantastic to everybody who's um who's done the marathon as well um woodland dog walk bike rides along the canal look so many positives bought myself a new lipstick managed a 5k run last night 
really successful morning at work in different locations, aerobics. So people are active, it's work positives, it's holidays, it's friends. Um, and I really want to always start these workshops with the positive because I think gratitude is so important. And the last one's brilliant. <laughs> so hid from my kids and went for a massage. <laughs> that sounds perfect. Um, and I think that it's really important um, to have gratitude or to start practicing gratitude. I do a lot, um, some of you may come on my goal, work, um, goal setting workshop. And that was actually um, a knock on from the first fatigue workshop that we did at the start of the pandemic or actually halfway through it last year. And we did cancer related fatigue workshop and then we did a goal setting workshop. And I do a lot of journaling and gratitude is something that I practice every morning. And I used to think it was very airy fairy and wasn't really for me. Um, but just thinking of one positive a day or three positives when life can get a little bit tricky and a little bit hard, there's always something, even if it's just your morning cup of tea when you wake up, um, which is often my number one positive, actually. Um, it's really good to be able to practice that and you can bounce and feed off other people's energy as well. Um, so Jessica I had some amazing news from my post treatment scan yesterday. That's fantastic to hear, um, Jessica. So, it, you know, we these positives, we can definitely feed off each other. So that's like how I like to start with the workshops. OK, so let's get cracking. So I've got even keep keep bringing them in because everybody's going to read them. So Pauline's put move well, live well program at Maggie's and Cardiff and indoor bowls today. It's got lots of active people already, which is really good. And if you're not that active or new to activity, do not worry at all. Um, hopefully we're going to give you a little bit of inspiration here, um, give you some small steps that you can take into your life and start with, but also understand, really get to understand cancer related fatigue and why it happens. Um, so if I can use my mouse to, so you must be thinking, who am I? Who's Gemma Hillier Moses and why, why is she talking to me today? Um, so this is me. So I'm hopefully able to talk to you about cancer related fatigue from a personal perspective, but also from a professional perspective as well. So my kind of, I'll give you a story in a snapshot was that I was diagnosed with cancer in 2012. Um, at the age of 24, I went through extremely aggressive a treatment with lots of hospital stays. And um, I learned a lot about um, physical activity and exercise. I come from a sports science background, um, ran the Great North Run in between cancer treatment um, two days after I finished an intense chemotherapy. Not everyone needs to run a half marathon. Um, but what it told to me was, you know, how important looking after the body and the mind is, but also how actually over the years, the evidence has come out and developed. And the reason why I set up Move Charity was because there's powerful evidence around the power or the, you know, however you want to use it as an intervention, as a tool, and the power of it for the body and the mind when going through cancer treatment at, at every stage of the cancer journey. Now, there's different ways of using physical activity, different reasons why, different times where you shouldn't and you should just recover. Um, but it is a very powerful tool um, to help somebody going through um, a cancer journey at whatever stage and whatever um, time that is. So I'm not, I founded Move Charity in 2016 and we've developed it um, from there. And I'll tell you a little bit more about the charity, but I'm also trained as a cancer rehab specialist. So from a sports science background, um, my degree, and then into a cancer rehab um, specialist roles as well. So that's about me. So hopefully um, you guys are happy for me to talk with you today. I've also done, we have done this workshop before. So we've actually checked the majority of people haven't been on this workshop before, which is amazing that we actually have a new audience and, and um, a new um, people to talk to, which is ideally what we want um, so that we're educating even more people and giving you all those tools that you need. I'm just going to quickly check um, all the chat box. That's just Georgie saying it's brilliant to hear all your positives. Um, so as a charity, um, what we the reason why I'm just telling you a little bit about this, because I think it's important to have the context um, of what we do as a charity. We have three main areas of work and you may have already seen these or been part of these, but We'll give you a bit more information in the end to see what you can access if you haven't already accessed before. But we have a virtual online cancer rehab program for children and young people. Um, the reason we have that for young people is because that's the first um, initiative that we set up when we started the charity because I was a young person diagnosed with cancer. Um, and we hope in years to come, um, we'll develop that into different ages. But at the moment, that's for children and young people. Um, we also have most, some of you will know, the 5K Away Move Against Cancer initiative 
initiative, which Georgie talks about that I'll go a little bit more into later, but that's the community initiative run by our incredible ambassadors. We have over 180 ambassadors now. And what we do, it's a community within the community of Park Run, um, a support group with a difference. And we just want people to come along and do 5K their way. So it doesn't even have to be 5K your way. We're just looking at giving you the support you need in an informal environment outside in the fresh air in nature, helping to reduce social isolation, but also to help get you moving. And that could be from cheering, to walking, to jogging, to running, or to volunteering. So lots of opportunities available there. And that was founded... Um, co-founded with an oncologist um, consultant and pretty special iron iron man lady um, Lucy Gossage so um, you know it's been fantastic to have the medical side as well in founding that initiative and then we've also got our resources where we look to inspire um, people and give you the information so this workshop sits within that arm of the charity um, and we've also launched a new podcast which I recommend every single person listen to each episode because you can get so much from that podcast um, and there's been some amazing guests and we're into our second series now as well so second series of our workshop second series of our podcast which we're super excited about so this workshop I do like to talk and I know I don't want to keep you over an hour <laughs> so we definitely want to um make sure that you get all the information that you need but you're not on here for hours because otherwise I'd be two hours and I'd still be talking and Georgie and Rachel would be like Gemma can you please get off this workshop but what I want you to pop in the chat box I said this is going to be interactive and um, what I'd like to know from you all is why have you chosen to come on this workshop so what do you want to know and find out hopefully I've prepared the workshop to answer some of these questions but I just want to know what do you, um, you know, what do you want to know from this workshop? There's one thing, is it about how you get started? What's the benefits of moving in relation to cancer related fatigue? Is cancer related fatigue real or is it just tiredness? So feed into that chat box. Why did you come on the workshop? It doesn't have to be detailed. Just what do you want to find out? That's all I need to know. Um, just before we start so that I can, um, I can really make sure that this workshop's being tailored to everybody's needs. So hopefully we're, everyone's gonna pop some chat in the chat box. Okay, so we've got advice given to patients of what they can do about their fatigue. Anything new, research to back it up, brilliant. Ways to try and push through fatigue when it happens. Hints and tips to manage post fatigue post-treatment. Find strategies to avoid the boom and bust of post-cancer fatigue. Yeah, these are great. OK, and also, if there are any questions that you have that I'm unable to answer, or we think actually we need more time and answering them, then we will take these questions. So hopefully Georgie and um, Rachel can record these questions and we will make sure they get answered um, in some way for or shape or form. So just to let you know that. Um, so we are at Guys Cancer Centre to learn more about the charities and events. Hopefully we will send more patients your way to support. Brilliant. Um, get some more perspective on recovery from fatigue to improve my knowledge about cancer fatigue and management, ways to cope and reduce fatigue post-treatment, better support patients, ways to manage, yeah, lots of ways to manage, late effects, um, understand what I can do during my treatment. Is it just post-treatment, just a thing? Okay, brilliant. Best way to support patients during a post. So we've got quite a few healthcare professionals, which is a good thing to anyone who's going through treatment so that healthcare professionals are also looking at ways and, um, and strategies they can use to support um yep so more tiredness ways to manage it perfect I can see these all coming through okay how long is it to have it normal brilliant okay that's really good so I'm going to deep dive into cancer related fatigue so what we um so you can keep your chats you can keep your questions coming but what I'll do is um Georgie and I'm just going to admit somebody else's waiting room. So Georgie and um, Rachel will take some of those questions as well. Um, brilliant. OK, so lots of people with common reasons to be on this workshop. So hopefully we're going to give you enough of the right information. Now, first of all, the baseline to understanding cancer related fatigue is understanding what cancer related fatigue is, why cancer related fatigue happens, and then what tools, interventions, strategies you can use to help manage it, reduce it, and hopefully in the long run, overcome it as well. OK, so what basically people um, people often look. So I'm also multitasking to make sure 
Yep. Also tips for manager. Okay. I'm multitasking with the chat box. So I'll try and make sure I'm telling you what I'm doing rather than just going, oh, oh, everything's popping up. So what, what a lot of people think about with fatigue is that it's just tiredness. I've had this experience from a personal perspective of people around me when I was going through my cancer treatment, not understanding anything about cancer. So why should they know that cancer related fatigue is um, a symptom or a side effect of going through cancer treatment? And also when you finish cancer treatment, also healthcare professionals, I wasn't spoken to enough. And I think a lot of it's changing now. I would give it that it's changing. No, not many healthcare professionals would talk to you about um, the effects of cancer related fatigue because actually the job is to, you know, give the treatment and then now there's a lot of work into long term side effects um, survivorship work and all of that type of thing, but it's still not talked about enough as a really devastating side effect of cancer, because it can sometimes be um, be a little bit unknown in terms of is it people thinking it's just tiredness, not speaking to their consultants about it, not speaking to the nurses about it and kind of just fobbing it off, but then having to deal with it a lot later down the line. So cancer related fatigue, what it is, is that it means that you're often very tired, exhausted and lacking in energy um, and that it's a symptom of cancer itself and, it, and the treatment as well. So not just the treatment, it's also a symptom of having cancer in your body as well. And it's very common, but actually, I think if you actually ask most people, it's one of the most um, deliberating side effects that um, cancer and its treatment gives because it can actually completely wipe you out. And the more sleep that you have, that's not um, when you're normally tired, you'll you'll be tired and you'll go to bed and you'll feel better in the morning. That's not the case with cancer related fatigue. It's um, it's definitely one of those things that more and more sleep doesn't actually help it. And you've got to find different ways to manage it. And also everybody is slightly individual on their treatment, their um, body's response to treatment, their body's response to cancer and how it affects your body internally and psychologically. So you've got to have that individual element to managing cancer related fatigue as well. Um, so a lot of the, the reasons why you get cancer related fatigue. So these are common known reasons why it happens. One of them is the cancer itself. And sometimes um, some cancers release proteins in the body that then um, make cancer related fatigue uh, more prevalent. It can also be that the cancer itself can increase the body's need for energy. So weakening your muscles, causing damage to certain organs, um, altering your body's hormones, which then might contribute to cancer related fatigue. Um, the cancer treatment itself is the most common known um, reason why cancer related fatigue becomes a short term and long term side effect of treatment. So chemotherapy, radiotherapy, surgery, um, trans transplants, immunotherapy, um, all of those cause um, cancer related fatigue. And most people, not everybody will experience it as some form of the treatment journey and beyond. Um, and actually, fatigue can also happen because when you're going through treatment, your body is working in overload. So your energy is being up and up and up. And that actually leaves the body afterwards with not much energy at all. Um, and then there are the knock on side effects of things like anemia, nausea, vomiting, pain, um, insomnia and changes in mood. So don't ever underestimate the psychological impact and what that has on on fatigue as well. Um, so again, anemia is one of the biggest things. Um, but like we said, psychologically, emotional stress of the cancer journey, anxiety, depression, post-traumatic stress um, of what you've been through. They are, you know, huge causes of, of fatigue as well. Um, lack of sleep and too much sleep can cause more cancer-related fatigue. So lack of sleep due to pain, due to treatment, due to stress. Um, can actually cause fatigue but then I I've done a lot of workshops especially with young people who have fatigue cancer related fatigue and then end up napping during the day and then get in a completely vicious cycle of um, going to sleep at night napping during the day having way too much sleep and then still feeling fatigued and just going on that cycle and not being able to get out of it so although you think that sleeping more helps actually just getting into a regular routine of sleeping eight hours a night will help to manage cancer related fatigue and uh, we'll look at some of the other ways that you can help to manage that as well poor nutrition can be a big cause so 
it's I completely understand if you're going through treatment so I came from quite we're all from different walks of life different backgrounds different um you know levels of activity different um priorities on health and well-being but I I came from quite a healthy background had really you know ate really well really nutritious meals went through chemotherapy and I remember a point where all I wanted to eat was Doritos so I had like a, a metallic mouth I just ate loads of Doritos Dr Pepper and ice cream and I remember a dietitian saying to me well you need to eat a bit, little bit better um, and I actually really struggled to do that and what happens with that is um Oh, um, no, sorry, Jay, they shouldn't, sorry, no, the slide shouldn't move. You should definitely still be on the first slide. Um, actually, maybe on the second slide. <laughs> um, I'm just talking, thank you for that um, prompt, but I am just talking around. I don't like to use too many slides, so I do like to talk. Um, so, but thank you for that um, prompt, Joe. So, um, yeah, so basically nutrition wise, so you can actually get stuck in quite a bad nutritional routine because when you're going through treatment or even beyond treatment, you may have changed your eating habits and patterns. There may have been do things done for convenience and quickness, or you may have a, like your family life, there's a lot going on. So you may, may not be making good nutritional choices. And that actually nutrition can have a big um, physiological effect and also a big psychological effect as well. Um, so that's, that is, has a knock on effect to, um, what may cause cancellated fatigue medications may cause it um a lot of people are on a lot of medications which don't make you feel great and um, which can cause cancellated fatigue lack of exercise so again this is why there's evidence to show that physical activity um and being more active moving more and we talk about it sitting less and moving more that can really that's one of the biggest interventions to help cancel related fatigue um so we are going to go on to that in a moment but before i before i go on to the next slide what i want to ask you is so we're going to talk about the evidence we're going to talk about the steps that you can take we're going to talk about different situations and then um, what resources are available to you but what i want to ask you is if you've experienced cancel related fatigue how does it make you feel because that's the number one step is actually becoming aware and and being aware that other people feel like that and cancer related fatigue is real it's not just tiredness so pop in the chat box how does cancer related fatigue make you feel so i'm just going to wait for the chat box to come through so low yep yeah. that's why i grab a drink while these are coming through feel bad that I cannot do more yeah makes me want to stop stop everything other than just sitting depressed completely washed out like I've crashed hit a wall absolutely wiped out unpredictable frustrated heavy arms and legs demotivated makes me feel depressed and frustrated weak all over worthless lethargic and really can't be bothered frustrated everyone thinks you look normal yeah that's um that is one of the tough things um, expect you to be better because it's an un, kind of it's not seen and it's not an external thing it's very within yourself um, but get wiped out if you overdo it left feeling sure how much I should and shouldn't be doing have flu aches without the flu how can you tell um, what's just tiredness and what is fatigue um, yeah that's a good question Jessica so I think it's about understanding so we talk about as the new normal um, when you've been through cancer treatment but it's understanding what your normal is and one of the best ways to understand um, the difference between tiredness and fatigue is actually to do a fatigue diary so we've got one on our on our move charity website um, and I'll, I'll bring it up in a moment to show you um, when we go through the intervention part of it but what you can do is it's best to track over a period of time the levels of fatigue so what is full on cancellated fatigue where it's fatigued over a prolonged period of time and you find that you have a huge energy slump. So you'll actually a lot of these comments that everybody's put through are quite severe um, feelings. So, so they're not just, oh, I feel, you know, feel a little bit of tiredness and then go having a good night's sleep or a, or a day off work um, solves all your, solves your problems and then you feel better. It's continued tiredness, weakness um 
feeling frustrated, depressed, down, um, because they're the psychological impact, lethargic for a long period of time, not able to get out of bed. Um, That's quite a severe one if you literally can't get out of bed. Um, And then we need to also manage the chronic fatigue as well, which is something that um, the reason why I I want to say that you need to talk to a healthcare professional about cancellated fatigue is because they also need to be aware of the trends and the journey that you're going on. So fatigue can be man, cancellated fatigue can be managed with a number of different interventions. If it becomes chronic related fatigue, you definitely, which is severe where you literally can't get out of bed. Um, you need to have blood tests done. You need to um, go in depth with your consultant to look at what actually can be done with that. So there's kind of that little that spectrum um, of what you should be looking at with that because chronic fatigue um, is something that you know moving more won't just help. It's actually that you need to then go and look at what is that next step to helping that. Um, but for most people dealing with cancellated fatigue and that tiredness and that fatigue feeling, interventions can really help that. So hopefully that answered your question, Jessica. Um, so what, what we don't want to do is we want to not give up our whole life um, and think, oh, this is just the way it's going to be forever. What we want to do is be able to make some small changes and over time see what those changes are and how positively they, they help you or how they may not help you. And you maybe need to look at another way of doing things. But we there's definitely... Physical activity and exercise is definitely one of the biggest ways that you can help to reduce the effects of cancer related fatigue. So I'm going to just go into a bit of evidence. Now, I'm not going to spend this whole presentation going into heaps of evidence because I think the interventions and the next steps that you can take are more important than looking at the evidence. But I know there's some healthcare professionals around and there's a lot of evidence um, now on cancer related fatigue. Um, But the evidence shows that really a um, a healthy lifestyle during and after cancer is associated with improved physical and psychological well-being, reduced risk of treatment, enhanced self-esteem, reduced risk of reoccurrence and improved survival. So there's also evidence, um, the Australian Institute um, of Oncology brought out that actually now it's a lot safer. So they'd say it's um, you're more at risk if you don't move and you don't move your body than you um, going through that cancer journey than if you just sit still and everyone wraps you in cotton wool, which is what used to be used to be prescribed and told that you actually shouldn't be moving you shouldn't be doing anything you should just be resting and recovery and so the evidence is building and building now to say that movement should be a really important part of the cancer care pathway now we all talk about movement exercise physical activity in completely different contexts depending on our experiences in life so some people don't resonate or kind of have a fear of the word sport or exercise because they see it as going to the gym lifting weights doing things that they don't like to do or that you may have not you may have not enjoyed say at school through university or life um sport and exercise may be something that you don't relate to but actually this is why we need to talk about movement as a way of life and i talk a lot a bit about sitting less and moving more so you can always fit into any one of those ways of moving whether that be moving a little bit more, sitting a lot less, whether it be physical activity, the garden and the housework, whether it be um, exercise of going to gym, going to yoga class, or whether it be sport and actually, you know, being part of a club or or more of a team structure. Each of those areas, everybody can fit into. Now, some people may have been really active before treatment. Some people have never done exercise in their life before. So there's also some behavior change elements that we need to look at. Um, And that's why really understanding you and what you want and what you enjoy is so important, but also taking small steps of change, not just going all in and then you'll be absolutely knackered and then you'll have to take 10 steps back um, when you've just taken one step forward. So really, really important to, to do that. So has anyone got any questions so far? I am going to go into um, what physical activity helps to do. So a bit more about the evidence, but hopefully we're all on track. If you give me a thumbs up, if we are (laughs) good. Okay. So what physical activity, I'm going to call it physical activity. So movement, physical activity, what it helps to do. um, And this is the evidence. So I've actually taken this off we helped to produce um, with moving medicine. So there was a number of different um, healthcare professionals, doctors, um, 
who brought together the move in medicine document. So if you're a healthcare professional, it actually talks to you how you talk to patients about physical activity and how you bring in whether you've got a one minute conversation, a five minute conversation or longer. So I've put, I will send out the link as well, but I'd absolutely use this resource. So we helped to pull this together with Rebecca Robinson and her team. So I've taken this from the website because I thought, actually, if I use this, then you can also relate to it if you look at the website as well. So physical activity helps to improve, helps anxiety, helps depression, helps restore well-being. So these are proven um, and evidence-based, improves cardiovascular fitness, improves menopausal symptoms, improves quality of life, helps body composition, helps lymphedemia, improves cancellative fatigue, improves co cognitive function, improves physical function and improves sleep quality. So if we could package exercise, movement, physical activity into a pill, we'd be giving it to every single person out there. The reason it's difficult is because it takes some understanding of you and your body, a little bit of research to know what's right to do for you. And then it can be it can be tough, if I'm honest. It can be hard work, but it doesn't have to be if you are able to take small steps and look at it in different ways. So if you're not looking at it from a physical perspective, look at it from a social perspective, reducing social isolation, getting out in nature psychologically. So it doesn't have to be as hard as people think um, getting active is. So Georgie's popped the moving medicine um, link in the chat box. Thank you, Georgie. So what we also want to look at is what does physical activity reduce? So it reduces the length of hospital stays um, in cancer patients and reduces post-operative complications as well. So there's heaps of evidence out there to show um, the impact and the effect of it. So I love this from moving medicine because what it shows is the impact of doing slightly more activities. So it doesn't have to be, it could just be 10, 15 more minutes in a week. So what is that impact on fatigue? So that impact is that regular physical activity helps to maintain muscle. OK, so what we what we're looking at as sports scientists and cancer rehab instructors is the human body. OK, and over during cancer treatment, it can be extremely difficult. You know, I had periods of time, two weeks, three weeks where I was so ill, I could not get out of bed. And that is fine. We've got to accept that that's part of the process. I'm not telling you to go every single day, jump out of bed, get moving, be active for five hours a day. What we're saying is when you can move, you should try and move that little bit more and it will help you to feel better. When you need to recover, you need to recover. And it's also about listening to the body as well. But with fatigue, it's also about actually, how can I integrate 10 minutes of moving? Walking, most people can walk, or even if you're you know, in a wheelchair, you can wheel, you can get out into fresh air. We need to try to integrate into that life as the first step and then build from there. So what it also helps to do is um, maintain heart and lung function as well. So our heart and lungs, keeping them strong, keeping them healthy. They, you know, our heart's a muscle. It does need to be worked. If it's not worked, that's when things, you know, it slowly starts to decrease in size, decrease in capacity. Um, and also mix that with um, cancer treatment and also um, bad nutrition. The heart just isn't being looked after. So physical activity really helps to look after the heart. You have obviously we're feeling less tired. So you hopefully would be able to do a little bit more feeling better and able to tolerate treatment better. It can also lead to, you know, cancer, like they're saying, we've already said this, can lead to fatigue, but staying active can improve tiredness. Um, and it also helps to maintain muscle. So I've got that twice on there as well. Um, so have we got any questions about the symptoms um, and the impact of physical activity and the evidence? Because I'm just going to check in on the chat box to make sure you're okay. So give me the thumbs up if you're okay because we're going to move on to what you can actually do and what the recommendations are. So have a little thumbs up in the chat box um, or any questions that might be coming through. So I'll just give it a couple of seconds. I'm still recovering from a little bit of a cold. So good job we're not in person, but it means that we can do these. So if I have a little sniffle, that's why. OK, I can see any questions coming through. I'm just going to put myself so I can see people. No, we're all OK. Brill. OK, we'll go on to I think we're all OK there. Um, so what we're going to look at is what should I actually be doing? How do I know what's right for me? 
So this is the um, guideline for physical activity for adults and older um, and older adults. I used to look at this and think, oh my gosh, this would scare the hell out of anybody thinking about 150 minutes or 75 minutes of intensity. But some of it's education. And I think education is really, really important. Knowledge is, is the key. Knowledge is king, as they say. So the more we talk about this, the more we know this, the less it becomes scary, the more we can break it down and the more we can look at our lives and see how manageable it is to integrate physical activity into our life when going through cancer treatment. Now, doesn't mean you look at this and think I have to go and do 150 minutes per week when I'm currently going through chemotherapy. The point is that actually what we want is a starting point. So something is better than nothing. And also that it's never, ever too late to start moving. And every little minute, as it says here, does count, but also to look at starting to put a plan or working with a team to put a, put a plan in place for you. So some of this is about going, oh, actually, I think I need to get in touch with the cancer rehab instructor because actually my treatment or operation was really tough. I'm in quite a difficult place and I have no idea where to start. That's one scenario. Another scenario is like, oh, actually, I'm OK. I've got I've got medium, you know, a bit of cancer related fatigue. I'm struggling. But actually, I think I can take all this information myself and start to make small changes like going out for the dog for a walk for an hour instead of half an hour or going out for 10 minutes with my friend for some fresh air. Um, that's that's another way of looking at it. So actually you kind of make your own assumptions. Another one is that actually I probably need to be a do a bit of research, make my own plans, maybe get just one session of advice from a cancer rehab instructor or a specialist or talk to my consultants. That's another way. Or if you're a healthcare professional, actually start talking about exercise in terms of cancer. You know, we are getting better at it, but the two and two didn't really go together for a very long time. And now they're starting to, and we should make people aware of that. Um, so. We've kind of already gone through the benefits, but one thing that I want to talk about is that just because somebody's had cancer doesn't mean you're immune from any other comorbidity. So things like diabetes, cardiovascular disease, um, depression or anxiety or mental health issues, back pain um, and other types of cancers. So it doesn't mean you're immune. So, that, so we actually need to really look after our body because it's gone through a lot or is going through a lot but we still need to look after it to make sure that it's fit and healthy enough to reduce the risk of any other comorbidities happening, but also to cope with what might be thrown at it in the future or now. Um, so I think that's a really important thing um, to think about. So I'm just gonna quickly check the chat box. Um, so we've actually got really lovely examples. And I know there are people who have actually um, benefited from moving more. So Pauline's put, I found a variety of swimming, Pilates, walking was better than just one type of exercise to keep me motivated prior to cancer treatment. Yeah, so prior to cancer treatment can change to your post-cancer treatment, your motivations, your life, um, the way you feel about certain types of movement exercise might change. But actually, like we said, variety um, can be really key. And what, what we'll go on to, so give another few examples um, and just talk through this document, but what we'll go on to, the reason why as a charity we want to share people's stories, their blogs, their with podcasts, because it's not just about the evidence, okay? It isn't just about doing a workshop and telling you about the evidence. Other people inspiring you is incredibly important. So I wish I knew and heard of more people who had used even the smallest amount of movement or exercise to help with their cancer journey when I went through my treatment, because it's so telling stories is so powerful. And people will then get into things that they never even realized were possible just because of listening or reading somebody else's blog and story. So we're trying to really hard to share those stories and our 5k UA groups hopefully being interactive with other people will inspire you to even take the smallest of steps um, that you need and it's not just reading a bit of evidence or you know listening to a presentation that's going to help provide that motivation and inspiration so thank you for sharing that Pauline um, so just back to this document what we are in the ideal world building up to is 150 minutes of moderate exercise a week now that could be broken into five times 30 minutes a week and you know, you're looking at different things like 
brisk walking, but it could be accumulated 10 minutes every couple of hours during your day. It doesn't have to just be one slot, but ideally it should be, the research shows it should be a minimum of 10 minutes. So anything less kind of doesn't really hit the spot in terms of keeping the body physically active as much as we want it to. Um, but things like, you know, housework, gardening, um, just just moving, having a little dance in your living room if you want to for 10 minutes. Um, but what you don't want to do, you don't have to read, the, you know, listen to this and go, right, 150 minutes next week, I've got to nail it. Really small steps of gradually where 150 minutes would become your norm, but maybe 20 minutes a week at the moment is your norm. Maybe you're going through cancer treatment, you're in hospital a lot, so you're struggling to actually do things and, and you don't feel very well. So 10 minutes is better than nothing. And again, like we say, when you feel like you can, then you can move. And that's when you want to start doing it. Um, the, the vigorous exercise is often quite hard for people with cancer treatment. Um, but that is something later on that people might want to bring in. So running, sport, stair climbing, that's just to raise the heart rate a lot more. And you don't have to do as much of that because the heart muscle gets worked and the muscles get worked a lot more. But maybe that's something to think about in the future. But what can be done, which is really good, is building strength. So in two days a week, can you um, look at maybe, you know, they've put carrying bags with shopping, some yoga, some they put the gym, but strength based stuff. Even if you were watching TV and you just get up and down out of your chair 10 times in an ad break, that can really help build strength in the legs and the functional part of the body. You need that muscular strength, which often deteriorates during cancer treatment. Um, or you may have an operation where you have muscle loss. You need that strength for the body to functionally operate and to prevent things like falls. Um, so strength work is as important as cardiovascular work. And so is balance as well. So balance is really important. So we have this thing where you could brush. So you don't even have to do a specific workout. You could be brushing your teeth when you're um, in the morning and at night and just stand on one leg for five seconds and see if you can balance. That's a great way because then you've got something to hold on to. That's a great way to, to put some balance work into your program. So it doesn't have to be structured. It could be completely spontaneous, completely unstructured, um, depending on where you are and what you want to do. Um, but the biggest message, and this applies to anybody, is that what we want to try and do is minimize um, sedentary time. So minimize that sitting time. So I always have that in my head. Actually, can we sit a little bit less and move a little bit more? And that would probably be my closing line of the presentation. Can we sit, sit, sit a little bit less, move a little bit more? If you can do that, that's the first step to help it with, reduce cancer related fatigue, but also to help improve quality of life um, and reduce a lot of other side effects of cancer treatment as well. So I'm going to go on to the next slide. So I've taken these from the moving medicine as well, because I think they were really good around common concerns. Um, so people have expressed and often do. And I know you've put some questions in there and we can answer some uh, via email as well if lots come through. But these common concerns, so one of them is I, or, I already feel so tired and want and you want me to do more. So I'm, you know, you're telling me you're tired, you're exhausted, you're fatigued. And I'm saying, oh, but move a little bit more. Like, how does that go down? Um, and it doesn't often go down very well. But I think what most people come to the conclusion is, is I feel tired, I feel fatigued. I've rested and it's not doing anything for me and I'm not feeling any less fatigued. So what can I do about it? That's probably why the majority of people are on here today. Um, it's kind of that self-discovery of just resting doesn't really work. Um, so we've, you know, we've looked at the evidence and our moving medicine research and, our, and the colleagues tell us that becoming more active is the most important treatment for persistent fatigue as it helps with body reconditioning and boosts energy levels. So serotonin is produced when we move. It's a happy hormone, dopamine and serotonin. <clears throat> so the hormones internally inside your body are being produced to make you feel better and happier. Same as when we go out in nature, same as when we socialize. So there's a proven scientific fact that moving will really help that. And then the evidence is there around cancer-related fatigue as well. So it's not like you're just plucking this out of thin air. We're presenting you the evidence to say, which should give you the confidence to then say, okay, getting out for that 20 minute walk 
I probably will feel better but after I do it before it I do not want to do it and you know I want to snuggle up in bed and that's all I want to do but afterwards you will feel better so what we want to do is it's it's also important during the cancer journey to take control back of your health So I remember when I was going through my treatment, I felt like everything was out of my control. People were doing everything for me. I was being given my treatment. I didn't really have too many decisions that I was in control of. And actually what we want to do mentally is take a little bit of control back, bring that normality back into our life. And this can help you help you to do that. So what we're encouraging you when you're in that situation is, like I've said before, slowly start build things gradually and look at small bouts of exercise even if they're just a few minutes to start with and that will increase over time increase the number of activity sessions first then increase increase the duration so if you're doing 10 minutes twice a week increase that to three three times 10 um, three times a week and then start to increase the duration also try and exercise or move with a friend it really really does help initially and you know we've got some of this um with this here um there's on another slide i think actually exercising with people is really sensible if you are in during the first say one to three months of um whether you're on treatment or you're finishing treatment um or you're living with cancer then the first two to three months it's really good idea to actually while you're finding your feet to have somebody with you um just as a safety and, and a support network really as well so my movement another concern is my movement is restricted because i had surgery So it's important to allow for healing to happen. The body does need to heal. But when you can work with a physio, you need to get your full range of movement back. You need to get your muscle um, tone back and your muscle strength back um, because it actually helps to build um, the body again. So it helps you get you fitter, stronger. And anyone who's had surgery, the more they've worked on their rehab and kept it in there, the better they've been in the recovery. They've recovered faster. They've been able to get functional movement back faster and they've had less complications and problems down the line. So it's either... You have a good physio um, where you're treated. If you don't find one or ask, ask, ask until somebody gives you somebody to work with um, because physio after surgery is so, so important to help somebody guide you or a cancer rehab instructor as well. The other concern is um, how do I know um, when to stop exercising? So it is really important to be aware that if you are going through cancer treatment, you're on medication, there are side effects to that medication. And, you know, if you do overdo it, you may actually, um, there may be some side effects where you might need to stop exercise. Um, But hopefully when you build gradually, you start to understand and know your own body. So sometimes dizziness, sickness, or excess tiredness, um, like as in literally can't get out of bed for hours and hours, day after day, in terms of tiredness, are signals that you need to stop exercising, wait for things to settle, and then also talk to your doctor and your consultants. But urgent medical um, attention is things like blacking out chest pain, excessive shortness and breath. And that's why it's really recommended that you do exercise with somebody you know or a support um, person, um, especially from the first one to three months, one to six, three to six months um, after you've finished treatment um, or when you're going through treatment. So really, really important. But again, if you start slow, build up gradually, don't be scared because, um, you know, you will allow yourself to adapt to new activities, allow yourself to learn and understand your body and then also build things gradually. So I want to make sure that I don't go over the hour, but I, I've got a few slides to go. So hopefully everybody's still with me because I'm aware I'm doing lots of talking, but that's fine because you're all here to learn a little bit more. Um, but there's also some um, aspects of people being concerned about who they're surrounded by in their community. Nobody does exercise in your family. Nobody does exercise. You've not had it as part of your life. So it's not in your culture and it's not in what you do. And I think that that's a really good um, thing to actually look at. This is where you need to look inwards a little bit and think about what do I want to do? How do I look after myself? Maybe I shouldn't be worried about what other people think. And maybe I should look at, you know, finding somebody else or going to an activity group where I can find like minded people who can exercise with me. But also being um, being not afraid to introduce other people to new activities that they may have not um, experienced before and do activities that you enjoy. Um, Things like dancing might be some part of your culture. And that's an activity that people don't realize is also exercise. Um, But like we say, looking at your daily routine and also looking at how you can sit um, a little bit less and move a little bit more. Okay. 
So again, just another couple of things. I'll let you um, let you read through these longer ones as well. So I've got another one from Sylvia. So Penny does graded exercise online classes now, which are brilliant. Free donations encourage, and you can have private individual sessions if you wish. Perfect. So again, the community that we create here, people have had different experiences on who they're using. So um, Penny, if you can just send Georgie, um, or Georgie, we'll look up that and we'll make sure that sent in the follow-up email as well. Um, and I'll tell you some of the resources that you can look at afterwards. So lots of ideas of how that can help and how you can be supported to get active. Um, so again, I don't wanna go to a gym. We've already talked about this. Movement doesn't have to be a gym. Home-based exercises, bands, exercise equipment. We have some move your way sessions on our cancer rehab um page on our move charity pages and 5k away website which we did in lockdown in replace of our 5k away groups and they were just home based exercise where we just moved together so again you don't have to go to the gym um but what one thing that this does um tell you as well is if you're looking at that moderate exercise so you're thinking okay well i want to go for a walk i want to raise my heart rate a little bit i want to be moderate a talk test and people use this as an rpe test or a talk test is a really good thing to do so if you've got if you're doing moderate exercise you should be able to hold a conversation but maybe not be able to sing your way through that conversation and that would be moderate exercise if you are um doing intense exercise so you're but you don't want to do intense exercise you know you're doing intense exercise because you wouldn't be able to talk when you're doing it so if you started to walk or run really fast and you're breathing really heavily and you can't talk that means you've gone into intense exercise so if you're especially if you're new to this or going through your treatment you might just want to dial that back a little bit um, to make sure that you're not hitting that intense exercise too much and keeping things nice and moderate Okay, let's just check the chat box. Um, perfect, thanks Georgie. Um, and then people who have actually never done any exercise before. So well, like I said before, it's never ever too late to start, has its benefits, um, both short-term and long-term. But we actually, it takes 90 days to create a habit. So people often think that you, you know, motivation just comes, but actually um, habit creates motivation. So the more you can get into a habit, I'm just going to sneeze, sorry. Um, the more you can get into a habit, the more motivation will come because 90 days to create a habit. So it'll feel hard for the first three weeks to start, say, moving or exercising 10 minutes um, per day or 10 minutes every couple of days. But as soon as that becomes a habit, it becomes part of your life. And I talk about it in our goal setting workshop. The more you can't live without that in your life anymore. So say, for example, two mornings a week, you decide to go for a 20 minute walk. After 90 days, you won't be able to live without those two 20 minutes walks per week because the brain likes consistently. It likes routine. It likes habit, but it takes 90 days to create those habits. Um, so try and keep into a routine. Start small, make a start, um, get support from your family and friends, build up slowly, incorporate aerobic activity. Like we said, things like walking, um, running, swimming, whatever it is you want to do, but also add resistance and the brush your teeth balance training is a great one. Um, but also then there are other apps, um, people that you can find out there that will help to keep you active as well. So I'm just going to quickly come on to this slide here. So building things into everyday life. So you can build things into your home life, your work life, your travel and your play. So break it down into that. If you're not into the everyday life of throwing a ball at the park, yoga, pool based activities, online exercise classes, but actually at home, gardening, walking the dog, standing during advert breaks is perfect for you. Go heavy on the home or like start with the home side of things. Then with the work, if you're actually looking at, you know, walking upstairs, if you're back in the office and you don't want to sit, have breaks every 45 minutes to get yourself moving, have a walking meeting and then travel. Can we actually look at maybe public transport? Not so much at the moment because not everyone wants to be on public transport, but can we look at walking to work, cycling to work? You know, anything that we can do that's helping us to move that's not just structured exercise. And then what we want to, what we kind of can also look at, and I just put this slide in there, is because goal setting is incredibly important. So I'd recommend everybody go on to the workshop and we may do another workshop on this, but we did a brilliant goal setting workshop um, after this workshop last year. And it really helps you to put a lot of these plans into action because vision, a vision or um, a goal, you know, a vision or a dream 
without an action plan is an actual disaster because you don't know what you're going to do, how you're going to do it and where, and you know, um, the, the actual tasks that you're going to put in place to do it. So make sure that you set your goals and then put a blueprint in place of how you're actually going to achieve that. Also use a diary. So track your activity, use a diary so you can see the trends. So we will send through, um, Georgie, I think the, the move on the move website, there is the fatigue diary. So that's a perfect way to track. It's just ticking a box of where that fatigue levels are each are on each day. Perfect way to track your fatigue over a month. And then you can track your activity with that and say, well, which days did I feel more fatigued? Which days did I feel better in? Um, anything tracking your activity and fatigue levels will really help give you a snapshot of what you'd feel like this month and then what are the progress and the steps that you can make. Um, and there are also apps out there that you can use. So there's an NHS app, there's the Catch to 5K app, um, lots of apps out there that you can use that will help you on your way if you are into the digital side of things. Okay, so I'm just going to wrap this up now. So I know I've been aware, I'm actually um, definitely sn snivelling now. <laughs> so sorry about that, guys. I am just coming over a cold. So um, ignore my little snivels. I'm just checking that Georgie's popped that link in there. Perfect. So just in the sense of resources, I know I've been through a lot today, um, but you know, if there is more that you need from this workshop, if you are on a healthcare professional and want more evidence, okay, I can send you that through. I can talk to you more about that. If you're, um, hopefully, if you're somebody who's going through cancer treatment or in recovery from cancer treatment or living with cancer, or you've got family and friends, this will have given you enough information. We don't need to complicate it any more than this. But what my key thing is to do is to give you those tools and those tips to take into your own life. So hopefully this next part here where we're going to I'm just going to go through quickly what resources are available to you, both from our charity, but also plenty of other charities as well, who are also have great resources, doing great projects and programs that will help you. Um, so on our Move Charity website, so www.movecharity.org and www.5kaywayup.org, which is the 5K Way initiative, we have a whole Move Your Way resources section. So we have had question and answers and workshops with healthcare professionals from a number of different topics over the past year that you'll be able to find a topic that you'll be able to deep dive a little bit into and find out more information on pretty much most parts of the cancer journey. So make sure you check, check them out because they're really important and a fantastic resource. Like I said before, we've also launched our new Move Against Cancer podcast. So we've had interviews with Paula Ratcliffe um, and her daughter Isla, who was diagnosed with cancer in 2020. And they give a real honest, you know, account of Isla's cancer journey, her struggles, you know, the support that's needed also for family and friends, as well as somebody who's going through cancer. And we've done so many interviews, too many to name, um, that will give you, like I said, storytelling, real life inspiration um, to also hopefully inspire you to move that little bit more as well. Um, and maybe challenge yourself. You know, we've had people do incredible challenges. It's not for everybody, but it might give you that inspiration of what could I do with my life? Um, what can I do differently? So um, that's a really good place to look. The other brilliant links are we do uh, work and I'm good friends with that Dr. Anna Campbell, who's part who founded Cancer Rehab. They do courses on cancer rehab courses. If there are people, you know, I didn't I wasn't the cancer rehab instructor before I had cancer. I didn't set up a charity before I had cancer. I did it because of what I um, what I experienced and what my passion was after I had cancer. So, you know, people on here might also think, actually, I'd like to do, I'd like to train in as a cancer instructor. I'd like to find more about exercise and cancer and the evidence. So that's an avenue you can go down, but also they have a safe fit program that um, I think they're still taking um, people on, but they can support you and personalize it's free and you'll get a personalized program from a cancer rehab instructor. So make sure you check that out as well. The moving medicine resources um, are what I've just been through. They are more designed for healthcare professionals about having conversations about exercise and cancer, but they are crucial um, for um, healthcare professionals and have brilliant resources of information on that as well. And Macmillan have a lot of um, resources information around exercise and cancer. So make sure you check that out. Um, and then we've also got these on our website. So the Center of Health and Human Performance, Cancer Care Map, um, and then safe fit as well, which I've already been through. 
So I'm just going to quickly check that chat box. I'm trying to wrap us up. I can never stick under an hour. Um, so I think we've just got um, people popping comments in there because I'm aware some of you do have to go. Um, but that is pretty much everything I could fit in about cancer and exercise. I'm going to stop my presentation now um, in, in an hour. So please, 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 I realise i am um, I'm got my cold fully flowing now, um, but please, please, please let me know if you do have any questions. I really hope that you were able to take something from that. I'm aware that I've talked at you <laughs> for the last hour, but hopefully it's been enjoyable and you've learned something. I'm also aware that not everything is individual. And I know as somebody who's gone through cancer myself, how important individuality is and um, knowing what's right for you to do. But hopefully you can take this information, go and talk to someone, go and get the advice and support you need, but also get in touch with us. We're here. If you want to just drop us an email, we can connect you with the right people, please do. Um, so I can see all the chats coming in now. And I just want to say thank you so much for everybody for being on this session. And if you do have any questions, I will hang around for the next 10 minutes if you want to pop them in the chat box as well. Um, so I think we've got everybody saying they've enjoyed the workshop, um, been really interesting. Um, Moving Web Medicine website is great for supporting rehab as well and, and um, rehab in a short and simple way for healthcare professionals. Yeah, absolutely. Would really recommend that. Um, so hopefully everybody's enjoyed that. I think the comments are coming through. Please feel free to give us the feedback. If there's something that you thought I would have liked to learn, but Gemma didn't cover it, that's okay. Pop it in the feedback because we can produce more workshops as well. Um, but we should have a few more workshops coming your way. So make sure you keep an eye on all our emails, all our newsletters. Um, and um, yeah, please keep in touch with us because we are here to provide you with all the information you need. And if we're not currently doing that, please tell us because we would like to do more of that. Um, otherwise, I'm going to wrap it up. I think unless Georgie has anything to say. Um, no, just thanks very much, Gemma. I um, really appreciate you doing that. It was brilliant. And please do fill out the feedback form when we email it tomorrow. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> anyone give me a thumbs up if I can see you to see, make sure you're still with us <laughs> perfect good I can see smiling faces still so hopefully <laughs> everybody enjoyed it and then um, we can let you get off and have your dinner now um, and relax perfect thanks everybody